All right, so a growing number of people in Donald Trump's inner circle are refusing to cooperate with the January 6th committee, and a growing number of voices in conservative media are blasting that committee's subpoenas as a political witch hunt. In fact, Tucker Carlson spent much of his show the other night talking about the horrors of a party in power running a sham investigation and threatening its political enemies with arrest. Really? It's kind of wild, because that's exactly what critics say Republicans in Wisconsin are doing as we speak. It's part of a new all-out assault on democracy going down in the Badger State. Wisconsin was once the home of the American progressive movement. Some would even say the birthplace of it. And Joe Biden won there last year by 20,000 votes. But in the past decade, it's also become a testing ground for GOP gerrymandering and election interference. It kicked off in 2011 when the Republican legislator carved up the state's districts to give their party a big advantage. It was all part of a multi-state GOP plan called the Redistricting Majority Project, or Red Map. And it has worked like a charm in Wisconsin. Just look at the election in 2018, where Democrats won 54% of all the votes in state assembly races. But somehow, they ended up with just 36 assembly seats. Republicans, on the other hand, won 63. That's nuts. But since Donald Trump lost, the Wisconsin GOP is looking to grab even more election advantages. In a win for Republicans, the conservative state Supreme Court just ruled this week that legislators don't have to consider political fairness in this year's redistricting plans. And they can basically look for ways to build on the 2011 maps. And now state Republicans, led by pro-Trump Senator Ron Johnson, say they should take control of the state's bipartisan elections commission that they appointed. You see, the GOP legislator had ordered a probe of last year's election, and it concluded last month that there was no evidence of fraud in Joe Biden's victory. But it said the state election commission could have overseen the race better than it did. Now, for Republicans, that was enough for them to demand control of the commission. I think it's imperative that we restore confidence in our election system for everybody. The election commission issued these guidances that were contrary to state law. And so, no, I, I, I've completely lost confidence in the Wisconsin Election Commission. Wow. Now, some Republicans, including the state assembly speaker and a county sheriff, are even saying the state's election commissioners should be arrested. Forget this. Letting absentee ballots be sent to residents of nursing homes during the pandemic. But wait, there's more. Doesn't stop there. Since last summer, the GOP Assembly has been paying its own investigative team to quote, unquote, audit the 2020 election. It's led by a former state Supreme Court justice who says that he's running a nonpartisan probe. But just this week, he disclosed that one of his top investigators had earlier sued to overturn the state's 2020 election results. The same results he's investigating now. And now the head of that audit is threatening to arrest the mayors of Green Bay and Madison, the Democratic mayors of those two blue cities, if they don't agree to come in to answer his questions. Where's Tucker Carlson on that? You've got gerrymandering on top of gerrymandering. You've got Republicans trying to take over state elections. And you've got another audit of the last election, which had no fraud and lots and lots of threats of arresting civil servants. Where does this end? Where's the outrage? Joining me now is the chairman of the Wisconsin Democratic Party, Ben Wickler. Mr. Wickler, it's great to have you with us. So I, I have to ask you what it's like being in charge of a party that, at least from my vantage point, looks like it's under assault, that it can win more than half the votes in an election year and only walk away with 36% of the assembly seats. How do you even get people excited about voting when their votes are already watered down by that uh, almost two thirds majority? Uh, it's great to be with you. And I wish it were only the Democratic Party that's under assault. It is our democracy itself. And I have to say, that is the thing that gets our volunteers all over the state out of bed in the morning, this real sense that democracy is on the line. The thing is, you know, all these Republican attacks boil down to one thing. They want the ability to overturn election results that they don't like. And the stakes aren't just for Wisconsin, because Wisconsin's been the, the tipping point state in the Electoral College in both of the last two presidential elections. And this, this coming election in 2022, we've got Governor Tony Evers up for re-election. He's already vetoed six different 
bills trying to restrict the right to vote and vetoed the Republicans' ultra-gerrymandered uh, attempt to draw their maps, although now they're trying to do it through the courts, up against Rebecca Clayfish, who was Scott Walker's lieutenant governor back when they rigged the maps in the first place. She, is, uh, she has said that when she was asked whether she would sign a law that would allow the state legislature to overturn an election result, she said it would be premature mm -hmm. to comment. So the stakes for the whole country in 2024 no. are on the line in Wisconsin's governor's race in 2022. Yeah, and I was going to say, I'm worried that they're using what's happening in Wisconsin as a template for other states as well, where they can get away with these uh, gerrymandered districts by this uh, in insane supermajority. I, I want to ask you about the, the state Supreme Court here for a second, that ruling uh, that would you know, seem to make it easier for Republicans to lock in their gerrymandered advantage and maybe add to it. You said that that's how they're trying to do it now through the courts. Republicans say it's democratic for them to control this process because they're elected by the people. But they were elected based on a map that they had already, as you said, been gerrymandered back in 2011. I mean, this feels like peeling back layers of an undemocratic onion. Am I, am I mischaracterizing that, that what we're seeing right now? They use gerrymandered maps to continue to draw more gerrymandered maps and pretend that they have a majority. It's, it's, a, it's an undemocratic, rotten onion at its core. In 2011, when they drew these last maps, they moved one-third of the state's voters into new districts in order to lock in permanent Republican control. And for the state legislature to now say that they should use a least changes approach because this is a political question, they've, if, if the politicians can choose their voters, they'll always choose the voters who can reelect them. There is no democracy in our state legislature at this point. And Republicans, for that reason, are completely unresponsive to the public. Things that almost everyone agrees with, including the need for fair maps, they refuse to do. They didn't meet for 300 days last year during the pandemic. But they sued to stop our governor from being able to have a stay-at-home order or even a mask mandate. And they said that the, the state legislature should decide any public health, health measures, and then they didn't meet. It's a complete crisis in governance, but it's what they want to inflict on the entire country. If they can get control of the, of the governorship and of our attorney general, you know, we have a Democrat, Josh Call, in office who said he would prosecute attempts to intimidate voters. If Republicans get the attorney generalship here, they're going to be prosecuting election administrators the way that they're threatening to do at all these other levels of government already. Yeah, it's absolutely shocking when you uh, put it in the way that you uh, just did right there. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the state assembly's latest so-called audit of the 2020 election. Similar thing happening in Georgia. People calling for an audit for an election that wasn't fraudulent. It started over the summer. It's ongoing. Now it's threatening Democratic mayors with arrest. What is that about? Honestly, like, how is this even happening? And I don't understand the logic. You do not have any evidence of fraudulent elections why are you asking for an audit? Why is Senator Ron Johnson saying he has lost confidence in the Wisconsin Commission, uh, Elections Commission when there is no evidence of any wrongdoing by anybody? This is a ruse to seize control of the machinery of democracy so that they can overturn election results. That's the bare fact. Uh, Robin Voss, who's the head of the state assembly, has said in media interviews, this isn't about 2020, it's about the next election. It's about 2022. They want a basis to be able to change the rules. Now, during 2020, we have a bipartisan elections commission that made decisions on a bipartisan basis about how to deal with the COVID pandemic. Republicans sued about all kinds of things to try to stop people from being able to vote, but they didn't complain about the elections commission's decisions until after they lost. And now they want to go back and, and criminalize the decisions that were made that led up to a Democratic victory, because that's what the people of Wisconsin chose. Uh, if you look at Gableman, the, the guy who's running this investigation on taxpayer funds, which he used to travel to Arizona and check out their audit, he has hired, as you said, someone who sued to try to overturn the election results. Uh, a, a state legislator, Mark Spreitzer, pointed this out to him in a hearing this week, and Gableman got red in the face and started yelling at him, got visibly angry. Um, they, the reality is, this is an attack on democracy. It's not about their confidence in the administrators. It's just about them not wanting to be accountable to voters the way that they aren't at the state legislature, uh, state legislative level already. Now, the one thing that I'm struck by is they're doing terrible legal work. It's a little bit like Sidney Powell or Lynn Wood or Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> if you look at Gableman, his threat to jail the, the mayors in Wisconsin was based on uh, them not 
sitting down for an interview, both of those mayors wrote to him and said, you know, tell about, tell me about the date and the, the ground rules for those interviews. And he never wrote back. Mm. And then he turns around and files a motion to try to jail them. So it's it would be laughable if it weren't so genuinely dangerous to the idea of democratic self-government. Yeah, the Linwood School of Law is not a place I would recommend anyone to go. Uh, listen, I got to ask you really quickly. One thing we haven't discussed that's not in the headlines as much is the effect that all this has had on election workers. Our system runs on volunteers, civil servants, elected officials. Uh, they are now getting blamed. They're getting death threats. Some are being abused. Some are being harassed, as we saw again in Georgia. There's a real danger that a lot of the people who help make our democracy run, they're just, they're not, we're not going to be able to find any more people who are willing to take the risk anymore. Are you concerned about that in the state of Wisconsin? I will say, you know, Steve Bannon has spearheaded this effort that now Wisconsin Republicans, including Rebecca Clayfish, have pushed to get partisan Republicans to sign up to become poll workers. And they're, they're doing this on the basis of these wild allegations uh, that they think they can stomp out fraud, quote unquote, by making it harder for people to legitimately vote. So it is urgent for people of who believe in democracy, regardless of your politics, if you believe in democracy, to sign up to be a poll worker, to run for county clerk or municipal clerk. Um, I, I'm and my, my, my team and our volunteers are encouraging people to do that. And I hope anyone watching right now, wherever you may live, um, you might consider doing that right now, because this is a moment when your democracy needs you. The one thing I'll say that's that's gratifying is that even though there have been these waves of demoralizing attacks, people are signing up and there's a tremendous amount of energy. There's a big fight back coming from the, the grassroots level to try to defend the system of democracy that you know has, has created the possibility of a good life. All right, Ben Wickler, the Wisconsin Democratic Party chairman, greatly enjoyed that conversation. Really appreciate all your insights and giving us a clear-eyed uh, look at w what's happening in another uh, state of concern for us. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.